Hi everyone, this is Jason again. Here I'm, today I'm going to talk about how to um, embed a volunteer science experiment inside a Qualtrics survey. So say you create an experiment of volunteer science, like a Flinker task or a Stroop task, or you want to do a multi-person chat, uh, or you know, have somebody donate their social media data. Uh, you can implant this in your Qualtrics survey um, following this basic approach. Um, and that's the approach I'm going to talk about today. And, and the example that I'm going to use is a Flinker task, uh, which is the, one of the templates that we have. So uh, basically, I've already sort of done the work here. Um, there's not a lot to it, but I don't want to spend a lot of time um, with the nuts and bolts of it. I just want to show you what I did, how it works, uh, and then give you the code uh, that you can use to, uh, to create something similar yourself. So um, let me go ahead and start. I'm going to go to uh, my research team where I created the, the Flinker task that works. So use JSON test. Uh, an experiment, and I have this flanker task here. Um, so you, all this is, is um, I, I copied the template of the flanker task. This is basically it. There are a couple of changes to it. Uh, it, took, it took me seven times to get it quite right. Um, but let me just show you um, um, uh, what I did. Give me a second, actually. What I'm going to do, I'm going to back up. I'm going to show you the Qualtrics side, what the Qualtrics is going to look like at least so, you know, at 50,000 feet, and then I'm gonna show you sort of the details here of how it actually works. So I have this Qualtrics survey. There's one question that says, you know, what year were you born? And then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna take the, the flanker task. Um, and then once the task is over, we're gonna continue and, and you know, then the survey is going to end and we'll be done. So the way this is going to work is, you know, we're gonna do this Qualtrics survey. Here on the second page, we've actually created an iframe that serves the volunteer science experiment, which I'll show you how to set all that up. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the secret to the sauce. Um, but we're going to show it in an iframe. The iframe is going to close when the experiment is over, and then we're going to just continue with our survey. So a couple of things we have to do. Uh, the first thing is we have to um, tell Qualtrics when the study is over, so when the Flinker task is over. And what that'll do is it um, basically will, what we're going to do in Qualtrics side is we're going to listen for a message that says the study's over and then close it. And on the volunteer science side, we just need to send that message. So the first thing I'm going to do here is um, um, send the message. So all I'm doing, the only change that I'm making is um, at the very end, when I, when I do experiment complete, which is how I mark the end of an experiment, which is all the way down at the bottom here, experiment complete. I'm going to add this message, this parent.post message end study with this little star. And the star just means that I can pass it through the, the window. Um, and so all this is doing is telling Qualtrics, which will be the iframe, um, or, or will be uh, where the iframe is contained. It says, hey, Qualtrics, the study's over. Um, and post message only works in, this, in the iframe setting. Um, so that's all that, that I did. Um, I just added a message that says, hey, the study's over. Um, one other thing that I did that's, that's not necessary, but it's a nice customization, is I allowed the researcher myself to customize the Flanker uh, variables from within Qualtrics rather than having to come in here and do it. So just a quick refresher. The Flanker experiment variables are you know, how what the focus icon is, how the color of the letters that show up, and the color of the, uh, the focus icon, the number of trials, how many examples you get. Right now, the focus icon is a plus symbol, and there are 10 examples and 10 trials. But we're gonna, um, I'm gonna set this up so that I can change this in Qualtrics. So in the Qualtrics survey, I can actually um, have it be, um, have it um, uh, determine what kind of linker task they get, how many, how many trials, what the icon is. Uh, the way that I do that is uh, passing it through the URLs. Um, so I have a, there's going to be a URL on the Qualtrics side that points to the volunteer science experiment and in this experiment code. I need to read those URLs and, and update the variables. So I added the other thing, this, the only other thing I did was add this function called load variables from URL. I wrote this from scratch, but you can just copy and paste it. All it does is it grabs this URL Whatever, whatever is in this box at the top of the, uh, in your URL is what's going to be saved here. It's going to be grabbed by this URL variable. And then what I do is I um, go through the, the variables object that I get, uh, which is just a, um, 
an array of variable names and variable values um, that are set by the uh, by this little interface here. So the variable index is focus icon, and the value of focus icon is, this, is the plus. Um, same thing for number of examples, the value is 10. And all I'm doing here in this function is so I'm saying, okay, for each value, each, each pair of keys and values in my variables um, for this experiment, if uh, this key show if I search the URL and I get that key, I find the key in that in, in my URL, then I want to update my variables so that the variables key is now whatever the value is uh, in the variables. Um, and, and that's all I'm doing. It's uh, just reading the URL and if the URL tells me that there's a focus icon and that should be something, I update it here. And then the code is already written to be able to use those, um, those variables. Um, so those are the only two changes, just this you know, function here, this five line function, where I grab URLs or grab the variables from the URL. And the one at the very end where I just post a message to, telling it, to tell Qualtrics that the study is done. So Qualtrics knows to close the iframe and, and move on. Now, the Qualtrics side, I have my normal survey, nothing, nothing fancy here. Um, all this Q2 here is, is, is the embedded iframe. And it's actually just a text box. So just to show you quickly, uh, if I add a little text, I can actually type in here and, and I can actually put in whatever HTML I want. In this case, I'm just gonna put in an iframe with the source. I don't think, uh, let's see, volunteer science does take, does allow me to do iframes. So I know this will work. Volunteerscience.com. Actually, I don't think I need to end it. Yeah. And the you know, volunteer size just shows up here in this little box. There's a lot of stuff that you can do to update the size of it and the layout of it. But that's all you really need to do in Qualtrics to run something in an iframe. Of course, very few things actually allow you to do iframes. Uh, volunteer science and Qualtrics are one of them. Um, so you can't just assume that you can just uh, implant any kind of website or, or web app in a Qualtrics survey. Um, but in this case, you can with volunteer science. And here, you see, I just have the same iframe. I call it uh, VS frame, and I'll show you why in a second. The source right now is empty, so it doesn't know where it wants to point yet. And the last important thing here is um, allow full screen equals true. Um, what this allows is I'm going to make this all full screen because uh, it's a Flinker task, and I don't want any of the, the normal things around the screen to interfere with people's response. Um, so I'm going to say allow full screen equals true, and then I'll actually turn it to full screen uh, in the JavaScript uh, in a second. So I create the iframe, and then I create this button. And this button here is just to let me uh, or let the user sort of kickstart the iframe. And the reason you do this is because uh, when you go to uh, full screen, it can be kind of um, unpredictable if you don't have it uh, being initiated by the user. So some browsers and some um, versions don't allow you to do full screen um, um, at all, unless you use the button. And so using the button is the, the one with the best way to get this to work all the time for everyone. So I have an iframe and I have a button. Uh, and as you'll see, um, the user will just click the button and it'll open up the URL. And this JavaScript is what makes that button and the iframe work. So the first thing I do is I um, add a function to the start button. A jQuery is just a, a nice convenient way of referring to a, a shorthand version of JavaScript that's relatively easy to use. Um, so that's what jQuery is. And so basically what I'm doing here is I'm adding to the start button, when somebody clicks, we're gonna run this function. And what this function is gonna do is it's going to um, grab the element where ID is VS frame. So it's gonna it's going to grab that iframe. It's going to open in full screen. And so that's a function that I've, down, uh, that I've uh, created down here, which I'll go over in a second. Um, I'm going to open it full screen. I'm going to update these variables. So num trials is going to be two. The focus icon is going to be the dollar sign. Icon color, I forgot what this color is, but I'm changing the color. And then, um, oh, the URL. So volunteerscience.com, experiments, join category. I forgot. Uh, we've got to post this experiment online because uh, right now it's just in my 
uh, experiment management system is not posted anywhere for somebody to participate. So I'm going to go over to the admin page. And actually, I have posted it online because uh, I've already done this to make sure that it all works. But I'm going to go over to my experiment administrator. test. And here I've already created the category and that pile with the Flinker task in it. And so if you go to Flinker and Qualtrics on my test page here, I can click play and it's going to do the, do the uh, Flinker task. So I'm going to back out of that. So anyway, that's online. Um, and I'm just going to uh, grab the URL for this particular study. So I'm going to right click, copy link address. It's going to be the same as if somebody hit click the play button. I just paste it here. It's going to be the exact same URL, 663. So that's what that is. Um, this is the URL for the publicly available version of the, of the study. And then some parameters. And so with this query, when you click the button, grabs the element full screen, sets all the variables, and then puts them into that iframe. So for the iframe, I'm going to create that source variable. And I'm going to add the URL, the number of trials, the focus icon, icon color. Um, and that's going to open up. That's what's going to open up in the iframe. And remember, in this Flinker task, um, I'm grabbing those URL parameters and updating the variables. So that's why those are there. And that's what we were doing here. Um, and that's sort of the magic. Uh, it's not really magic. That's just the basic elements of how to make this work as an iframe. Um, a couple of other things about these utility functions here. Uh, open full screen and close full screen. Um, these are ways that the, of telling Qualtrics to maximize, or, or I guess it's telling your browser to, to maximize the iframe. And you have to give a different request for Mozilla and a different one for Chrome and, and Edge or Internet Explorer. And so I would just copy and paste that stuff. I think I probably copied and pasted it from somewhere else. Um, but you'll need that to open and close the, the full screen. Oh, and the other thing is uh, we want to be able to hear that message. Remember, Volunteer Science is going to tell Qualtrics that the study is over. And so Qualtrics needs to listen for that message and then close the study. So I'll create this function. That says you know, if I have, if I receive a message, um, if in that message, if that message is in study, then I'm going to grab the iframe, close full screen, and then I'm going to empty it out. So or then I'm going to hide it. So setting the style display none basically says you know, make this iframe invisible to the user. Um, so that's a function, and then I'm just going to attach that function as a listener. That's all that line is. It says, hey, add a listener, and when you hear any kind of message, um, call the receive message function. That's it. I know it's kind of a lot. This is why I didn't you know, do it all uh, with you side by side and go through a whole uh, line by line edit video. Um, there's a lot in here. But uh, I will give you a copy of the Flinker experiment. I'll give you a copy of this. Um, JavaScript and the Qualtrics, so you'll just be able to upload the QSF file that Qualtrics has um, and, and be able to, to run with it uh, yourself. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. If you have other topics you want us to cover for Tinker Tuesday, let me know. Um, we're always happy to hear what you're interested in, help you figure out what can work on volunteer science, and uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you.